let's jump right in. Matt, the first thing I want to do, we want to unveil the morning line here from Horse Center and talk about these odds as far as whether we think those are good odds, not so good odds, fair odds, and so on. Let's start with the likely favorite, Justify, Matt. We're, we're listing Justify at 3-1 to one as a relatively clear favorite, uh, despite the uh, relative quality of this field. Yeah, I, I think that's true, Brian. It, as we've said before, it is just a really fantastic field, but I think there's no question that uh, Justify will be the big favorite. Unbeaten, Bob Baffert, uh, all those factors. Exactly. Bob Baffert. Now, if he hadn't won the Triple Crown, maybe those odds would be a little higher. But but the Baffert factor has been, in, in fact, in years, he, uh, he's he been a mainstay at the Derby, the Triple Crown. He's been America's most successful trainer in Triple Crown races for just over 20 years now. So Justify, he's captured the imagination of everyone uh, right from the get-go. His three, or, three races have been eye-catching, to say the least. However, Matt, on my fair odds line, I don't think three to one is too attractive to me, considering all the unanswered questions still, the pace, the distance, the competition, the 20 horses, everything that goes along with Derby. That's a little bit too low for my taste. However, you know, three to one's not bad if you think he's unbeatable. Uh, absolutely true. I agree with what you're saying. And, and you know, when you're talking about 20 horse field and you're using derby horses, whether it's in daily doubles or pick fours or pick fives, um, you get more value than those odds. That's true. So there, there's value in every horse in this field. Uh, I'm going to try to beat Justify as the favorite. But, uh, you know, if you like him, go for him because he's not going to be six to five or anything like that. Magna Moon, Matt. Magna Moon, this was a little tougher, but Magna Moon is a slight second choice. We got him at five to one, just ahead of Mendelssohn at six to one. Those are the two we think are vying for second choice. Yeah, I think that those are the, the, the second and third choices of a lot of people. I think some people might be saying Mendelssohn as the second choice, but I don't know. I, I think I agree with you, Brian. The We talked about the Bob Baffert factor. We're talking about the Todd Pletcher factor here with Magna Moon, and he was so impressive in his last race. And, and uh, there are questions about horses coming over from uh, – uh, from England to to run in the Derby, so I I feel comfortable with Magna Moon ending up as the second choice, not by much though over Mendelssohn. Yeah, I think Mendelssohn's race was the most impressive, the UAE Derby, but he's got more questions, just like Justify, different questions, but just like Justify, uh, international horses have not fared great in the Kentucky Derby, uh, probably since Bold Arrangement ran a big race years and years, decades ago. Uh, so uh, Mendelssohn has his work cut out for him, but if he can repeat that UAE Derby six to one or so, doesn't look bad. Magna Moon, Matt, uh, Matt you beware the undefeated horse. I think uh, just like Justified, Magna Moon uh, five to one, he's going to get some play. I'm not sure if I like him at five to one, but I certainly see him as a danger. So uh, five to one, if you love him, not bad. If you think uh, this field is just a lot tougher, speed uh, speed figure-wise, Magna Moon is not as good as Justify or a few others. So maybe you want to beat Magna Moon as the second choice. The next bunch of horses we have on these, uh, our projected odds, Matt, are all at 8-1. to one. I have a feeling Audible might be preferred of the trio, but uh, we have Audible, Good Magic, two-year-old champion, Bolt Doro, who ran against Justify last time, all at 8-1. to one. Yeah, it the waters on the lot on the morning line get a lot murkier uh, at this point, and uh, I, I think Audible in there at fourth choice makes sense again with the with the Pletcher factor. But Good Magic ran well on the bluegrass, and that's Chad Brown, and he's as big a name almost now as as Baffert and Pletcher are. So I, I think those two may be a little bit ahead of Boldoro just because Boldoro hasn't had the win, and he doesn't have the name trainer uh, like those other horses do. On the other hand, Bolt Doro's been the horse that we've known uh, since last fall. Bolt Doro has not run a bad race. He's run really well in every race. And, uh, you know, I, I think there are people out there, and, and, and it wouldn't surprise me if this turned out to be the case where 
they think the two California horses are the two best horses, and that would be Justify and Baldoro. I'm not ready to jump to that conclusion with all these good horses, but I think Baldoro is an obviously a classy horse. And uh, third time off the layoff, chasing uh, really unpressured Justify, I think uh, he makes a lot of sense. And, and if he's in the 8-1 to one range, just like Good Magic, the Bluegrass winner who seems to be coming up to the race really well for Chad Brown here in Kentucky, and then Audible, if you look at those speed figures, behind Justify, Audible's right there. Those two races in Florida were good. So any one of those three, eight to one makes a lot of sense, both for fair odds for me and uh, and also what they'll actually be in the Derby. So interesting field at the top here, Matt. Then we drop down a little bit. No horse has won the Wood Memorial and then won the Kentucky Derby for a long time, Matt. I think this year it could happen. But I think that factor alone makes Vino Rosso a little bit higher than the the six above him and the fact that his Tampa Bay Derby was was not very good. So Vino Rosso next at 15 to 1. And on my fair odds line, I have him a lot lower. So I'm going to be using Vino Rosso at about 15 to 1 for sure, man. This is the magic of the Kentucky Derby for uh all of us handicappers and all of us betters is that it's a 20 horse field, Brian, and it really only happens once in our country and they all can't be five to one, six to one, uh, three to one. You've got to have horses that have big odds that have odds that are, are higher than what you think is the potential of the horse. And I think Vino Rosso is the perfect example of that from the Todd Pletcher barn. And, and if anybody has got this point system going to the Derby thing figured out better than Pletcher, you're going to have to have a pretty strong case to convince me of that. Um, I like the Wood Memorial also. And imagine Vino Rosso at 15 to 1, maybe or, or maybe a little bit more than that. Those are attractive odds that are going to make you want to maybe make some win bets in that case. But it also means that he's going to be a really good price in the pick threes, the daily doubles, the pick fours, the trifectas. This is the thing that's so special about uh, betting on the Derby. Vino Rosso, Matt, uh, I think he's a mile and a quarter horse, and I think he's one of the horses truly developing right now, getting better right now. Pletcher, Velasquez, this is the one he's liked all along. Uh, Velasquez won this last year, of course, with Pletcher and Always Dreaming. You know, Rosso, I think I think they have a reasonable shot to do it again. I love the odds on him. We're going to go a little faster now, Matt, because anybody else on the list is a long shot, including my boy Jack, who's really run well and graded stakes all over the Midwest this year. I have him next to 20 to 1. Noble Indy, 25 to 1, are the next two on the line. Yeah, I agree, Brian, that uh, the, the horses that we just spent the most time on, I, I feel very certain that the winner of the race is from that group. And yes, folks, I know that there have been big odds winners in the Kentucky Derby plenty of times, but when that happens, it's not coming out of a field of such quality in here. So uh, when we're talking about the rest of these horses, to me, these are horses that I would really think about if you guys are wanting to play trifectas or superfectas. These are the kind of horses that well, maybe they could sneak in for third or fourth and produce some big, big prices. That's happened many times in the Derby. Okay. Individually, Matt, my boy Jack, I think, is one of those horses that I think we can use underneath. I, a very consistent rallier. I think he's up against it as far as quality in this field, but uh, certainly a horse who could rally up for third or fourth. Noble Indy's a horse I won't be using 25 to 1. I, I, I don't like him that much, uh, and I think he'll be closer to the pace early and, and have a hard time down the lane. There's some other interesting horses still coming. Uh, Solomini, Flame Away, and Hofberg all at 30 to 1, Matt. Also enticed. To me, the two interesting ones there are Hofberg and Solomini, just kind of different reasons, but an unknown factor. Maybe they step forward for a mile and a quarter in the Derby, and maybe at 30 to 1, Hofberg and Solomini run a big race. They certainly could. I, I like Hofberg, even though he's inexperienced with his only three, with only, uh, three starts. But he ran a really nice race uh, 
in the Florida Derby, and, and he could develop under the the leadership of Bill Mott and and get a piece of it. Solomini, so much potential. Um, who knows when he's going to wake up? But at thirty to one, it's worth a shot. Right, right. I think Solomini could be a mile and a quarter horse's son of Curlin, and as we know, he has been uh, famously not changing leads of race. If all of a sudden he uh, he he learns his lessons and does it in the Derby. Interesting horse at 30 to 1. Let's look at the 40 to 1 shots on our line next, Matt. There's a bunch of them. We have combatant Lone Sailor, who had a big workout here recently. Free Drop Billy and Stilled Regard is now in the field. I have all four of them at 40 to 1 here on the Horse Center morning line. And all four of them are horses who have done good things in the past. And if they could get back to that big race again, they could... Uh, Get in the get in the bottom places in those exotic wagers, right? And we've seen that a lot uh, over the years, as you mentioned. And the interesting thing about all four of these horses, combatant, lone sailor, free drop, billion, and still regard, they're all eligible to be passing horses late. So again, as Matt's been talking about, if you're looking at exotics and you want to get a long shot in there, take a look at this uh, this uh, quartet at forty to one, combatant, free drop, billion, and still regard and uh, Lone Sailor. All right, Matt, now we get to the real long shots. Lucas was trying to get a couple. D. Wayne Lucas, multiple, multiple triple crown Kentucky Derby winner. He only got one in Bravazo, and we have him at 50 to 1 in here. Yep, and like we've got Bravazo at 50 to 1, Promises Fulfilled at 75 to 1. Uh, I don't see them being impactful at the end of the race, although at the beginning of the race, um, they could have some influence on the pace. Yeah, so that doesn't really affect the betting. Uh, we don't think they'll stick around, and uh, uh, hopefully that they uh, ensure an honest pace. We want a fair race for the Kentucky Derby. Also on that list, Matt, is Forenzi Fire at 75-1. to 1. We should mention that uh, Combatant and Instilled Regard are two new horses into the top 20. Kronkowski had a slight illness overseas, won't be coming and quip they decided they wanted a little bit more time maybe they wanted a, a an easier race for the lightly raced uh call to won the tampa bay derby and was second in the arkansas derby so he'll be waiting for the preakness so this is the 20 horses as it stands with our odds we'll show them again here matt i'm looking forward to vino rosso at the odds as the best play at the odds i think that's a good uh, recommendation brian i agree <laughs> 